One of the most important things that good chief marketing officers understand is the law of diminishing returns. It's that doing what worked in the past isn't necessarily the thing that you need to emphasize in the future because pumping more money, more energy into certain things has diminishing impact. There's a critical point where you've already done enough and you need to reprioritize other things. So the question that a good CMO is constantly asking themselves is, where is the marginal impact? In other words, you're being more forward thinking, less in terms of what worked in the past and more in terms of what's going to get us the highest yield tomorrow. So to give you an example of this, I was working on a very large campaign for a product. The product had very high brand awareness. I had tracking data on panel research to show that people were quite familiar with the brand. However, the purchase intent was quite low or lower than we expected. So investing more money, more energy into making people familiar with this brand that this product exists wasn't going to be very helpful. Instead, what we needed to do was reprioritize in the campaigns reasons why people should buy it, convincing them that they should buy it, uh, not just raising the, the overall level of awareness. Now, for most small businesses and medium-sized businesses, this isn't the problem. The problem is people just never heard of you. You have no brand awareness. But as you generate sufficient brand awareness, then the question becomes, well, what's the purchase intent? What are the reasons that they're resisting actually wanting to buy the product? And are those reasons within our control? Is it something we can manipulate in the advertising? Or is it something we really have no control over and has to do with business cycles or uh, some sort of external thing? Another thing you need to consider is that investing in something like brand awareness uh, works to a certain point, but then it starts to fade off over time. And this is similar with advertising, just pouring money into advertising uh, on the, the margins at, at the incremental level isn't necessarily going to give you the, need, the, the yield you need. So what you need to start looking at is other things like, are we investing enough in sales enablement, for example? So this is one of the reasons why mid-sized companies typically go and hire a product marketing manager. Because a product marketing manager is going to help things that synergize other people in the business, like the sales force and the product team. So what they're able to do is get more uh, strategic thinking, more alignment, and less in terms of just pumping more into demand generation, even though that's typically what works when you're a smaller business. So another way to think about this law of diminishing returns is by looking at the stages of awareness. That's what I'm calling these. This is uh, my own kind of modified tweak on some of the funnels that are out there. So basically we have these six stages of awareness. There are people that are aware of your brand, or you could phrase it as unaware of your brand. People that are aware and believe in the problem that you solve. People that are aware of your product category as a solution to the problem. People that are aware of your product and familiar with it and are convinced it's the best one in the category. People that are familiar with your free offer, maybe it's a free trial or a demo, and then your paid offer. So maybe it's your 15% discount or uh, just the fact that you have these contracts and different price points. So these are different stages of awareness. Now, often what companies do, particularly when they have a short-term mindset, is they're obsessed with really promoting these things. Let's get more demo requests. Let's get more product sales. You know, it's very short-term, bottom of funnel. Uh, but the problem here is that you can only extract so much money or so much impact when you're dealing with the bottom of the funnel. So there are gonna be times when you need to invest a lot more time at the top of the funnel. So often what I see is large companies don't spend enough time here. They don't have a very distinctive brand. Their brand awareness is not that high. So the marginal impact of investing in brand marketing is 
tremendous. But the mindset is still uh, what got them to the size they're at today, which is this short-term demand generation, or if you're in B2C, performance marketing uh, mindset, uh, when the real marginal benefits are gonna stem from investing in assets like brands and partnerships, these sorts of things, uh, they're gonna cascade down the funnel to synergize uh, with some of this bottom of funnel stuff. So the other way to think about this is what kind of content assets you need to produce. So with brand marketing, it's gonna be assets that are very emotional because you're dealing with people's memory centers. Whereas when you're talking about something like the product, you're gonna be a little more technical, a little more about jobs to be done, kind of specific tasks. And then when you're getting to things like the paid offer, well, this is very salesy stuff. Okay, how are we creating scarcity? How are we uh, creating urgency? So you, you need a portfolio of a number of these things. But if you look at the assets in your company, what you will probably find is that at some level, there is a vacuum. There's not enough uh, content, for example, selling the problem or selling the category. So for example, I was in the business of marketing uh, software for dictation to veterinarians. Now veterinarians often don't use dictation software. They're still typing their notes by hand, uh, whereas do MD doctors tend to do a lot of dictation. So one of the considerations here is, do they really need to be sold on our product? Not so much. What they really need to be sold on is the category they need to be convinced that dictation is the solution to their problem. The problem being that you're, you're spending too much time on paperwork, you're charting from home, et cetera. So uh, what really needs to be done there is the creation of content that sells the category, that sells dictation, less about selling the product, less about selling the specific brand, but instead elevating and educating around the category itself. So you need to look at your company and think about where are you deficient? Maybe it's that people are already convinced of the problem. They're convinced that the category is the solution. They just don't have enough details about your product. That's a common issue that I see in the software business, where when you go to company websites, they talk about a lot of high-level benefits. Perhaps they talk about the problems that the target customers have, but they don't get into a lot of details about the specific tasks that the product does. Or if they do, they're a little too technical about it. So the level of product awareness is actually low because people aren't that familiar. And then what happens is these people that we assume are product aware, these prospects, get handed off to the sales team. And then the sales team says these are poor leads because they don't know enough about the product. So marketing's job here would be let's create more content around the product. So here you need to think about where is the marginal benefit? Is it actually gonna be creating more blog posts about the problem? Or is it gonna be creating more uh, feature-centric uh, sales sheets? Is it gonna be focusing more on sales enablement and battle cards or information that educates people about why you're better than the competitors? What investment in content will have the biggest payoff? Another way to think about the law of diminishing returns is by looking at the more traditional uh, funnel stages. So marketing captured leads, engaged leads, marketing qualified leads, uh, marketing uh, sales qualified leads, sales qualified opportunities, and one customers. So often what I see when I look at the data, and you can look at this data in Salesforce, or you can look at it in a spreadsheet, what you wanna look at is the conversion rates. Now the conversion rates from MQL to SQL and to SQO and to one, uh, as a general rule of thumb based on Forrester benchmarks, should be about one third. So if it's only 20%, or if it's over 80%, something like that, you need to start asking yourself, uh, what what's going on here? Uh, what is the problem? Now, what you may find is that the conversion rate's fine at certain stages, and it's, it's nothing to be concerned about. But if it's particularly low or particularly high, then that's something that you need to focus on. That's something you need to fix. That is uh, where you need to focus your marginal effort. So uh, a huge problem I see is uh, in business to business companies, a poor MQL to SQL conversion rate. Uh, so that means there's been a poor handoff to the sales team, could be indicative of all sorts of problems. Maybe lead follow-up time is too slow. Maybe the MQLs are just coming from wrong targeting, all sorts of problems there. 
SQL to SQO, often these rates are too high. And the reason is because the, the definition of an opportunity is too strict. It's based on BANT. Shouldn't be based on BANT. It should be something looser. So the problem there uh, with too high a conversion rate is you're leaving money on the table. There are people there that are going to buy in six months. Maybe they're not going to buy this month, but there's still opportunities and, that should be uh, regularly followed up with by the sales team before they're recycled. So uh, looking at the conversion rates will help you to figure out where to focus your energy. Okay, another big issue that I see with the law of diminishing returns is that people need to understand context. And a lot of the context has to do with either the size of your company or a proxy for size would be something like how much funding you have. So if you're a really well-funded startup, then you can probably operate a bit more like a large company would. So one of the biggest things here is small companies need to focus more on demand generation. So that's things like uh, sending out outbound cold emails. They don't need to spend as much time on things like brand marketing and video ads, things like that. Uh, but often the reverse happens where small companies, they focus on uh, not typically brand marketing, but I would say content marketing. Uh, content marketing isn't going to have a huge impact in the short term because it takes time to generate things like uh, search engine ranking. They'd be better served by doing more sales oriented outbound demand generation. So the real uh, marginal effort should be applied here. Now, as you get large, one of the problems that happens is the reverse. These large companies spending way too much time in demand generation, not enough time on brand marketing. That's where the marginal impact is gonna be, is on the brand marketing side. Another thing to think about is brand positioning. So you have these brands that are out there to represent your product or your portfolio of products and services. So what may happen is you may want to reposition. Companies change, strategies change. Maybe you're trying to cater to a different market or uh, you have better insights into a refined value proposition. But uh, ultimately what happens is you can only reposition the brand so far. And marketing can only do so much. You have to come down to the reality of what the product can deliver. So a common issue that I see here is the marketing department will do research. They'll do something like surveys. They might go to sentiment and do some panel survey data. And they're able to find out, oh, our customers really value this. This is their biggest problem. Uh, what they would really love is something that solves this. So what you do is you go and you create a bunch of marketing around that problem. But then what you may realize is your product just can't solve it. It can't deliver on that uh, value prop. So uh, one of my colleagues, what he talks about is a lot of small business software talks about you getting paid faster. And they're promising that you'll get paid faster because there are these fintech products that do things like uh, automated invoicing, et cetera. Now, the problem he says with that is uh, software is only one aspect of getting paid faster. Ultimately, it's going to be uh, things that are outside of the control of the software. So uh, if you can't actually deliver on the product, don't reposition the brand around whatever that benefit is or that feature. You need to come down to reality. And the reality may be that what you're selling is not a strategic purchase. It solves maybe a level three pain, and that's fine. Uh, but you need to make sure your brand reflects the reality of where you're at and you're not getting into the fantasy world where uh, you're trying to stretch that brand too far. And ultimately, something I just want you to think about, because I, I often see this, particularly with companies that are, are starting to scale, is uh, are you investing too much in demand generation? And specifically things like uh, gating ebooks to capture people's emails, et cetera. Look at the conversion rates. Stuffing more marketing qualified leads or marketing captured leads into the funnel may not be producing the results you expect. You gotta look deeper, find out where the actual customers are coming from. You got to look at what's actually persuading customers to go with your product or your brand and uh, focusing and obsessing too much on the metrics and the attribution in your demand generation funnel is often a critical error that I see and something that be, can be corrected by getting into this mindset of where is the marginal benefit? Where is the next big payoff? And it may not be on the demand generation front. It may be on something like forming a big partnership or perhaps investing more in the brand itself. Health.